Thank you, Pallavi, and thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us uh, here uh, today. Let me uh, begin by um, thanking Glenn uh, Weil here from Microsoft for uh, co-organizing this conference. It's been a wonderful experience. We wanted to do something different. This is our annual conference, by the way, so we do this every year. And uh, this year, we are doing it uh, very differently by collaborating with Microsoft and doing the first day of the conference here in New York. Uh, so we're really looking forward to uh, the discussions uh, today and tomorrow. Um, let me um, introduce uh, the topic of uh, the conference and give you a little bit of uh, the thinking behind uh, the topic. As you know, it's called Radical Mechanisms 10 years after the financial crisis. The way I like to think of uh, um, our uh, economy or society or the world is that we, we, we choose how to organize ourselves, and that's what we call public policy. Right? But the important word here is choose. So it's a choice how we design our financial system, it's a choice how we design our legal system, it's a choice how we design the property rights, it's a, and then so on and so forth. Right? Um, when we are born into this world, we take all of those things as given, and that kind of becomes hardwired. But every once in a while, someone comes in and says, you know, wait a minute, do we have to live like this? Or what are the consequences of living like this? And I think 2008 was one such event that collectively forced us to think about that question. So it was a major event, obviously, for, for many reasons that all of you are well aware. But it, in many ways, it set in motion a set of questions that people asked of why uh, what happened happened. And since then, both the, uh, the, the financial systems and the political systems have moved in a way that uh, has only reinforced that question. And you know, the politics is becoming polarized and so on. Um, and I think at that, at that point, it becomes even more of a need to think about collectively how do we think about those choices that we make. And so that's where we are, and that's why we thought it would be useful to, to talk about uh, mechanisms, uh, which again is uh, a word we chose to think about how we design to organize ourselves uh, in, 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 in different ways. And uh, we wanted to be a little radical, and it helped that Glenn was co-organizing, because he is <laughs> someone who is somewhat of a radical in a good way, not in a bad way. Um, and so we, we wanted to think out of the box. So that's why um, we didn't care about the age of the person who's coming on the stage. We didn't care about the title of the person. What we care about is what ideas they have to, uh, they have to present. And let me also add on that that um, I think one very, as you think about you know, alternative or radical mechanisms, one very important dimension uh, to consider is the role of technology. Uh, there are many problems that we, again, um, we have taken as given that, okay, they are very difficult to solve, they cannot be solved, and hence we must uh, um, uh, compromise on adopting a mechanism or a policy design, which is, we know is not best, but that's the best we can do given, given uh, the feasibility of, uh, of, uh, of design. Uh, but that has rapidly changed. I think what one thing that we haven't fully realized as uh, sort of uh, thinkers and policy makers is that technology allows us to do things that were not that much possible to do. And you will see some of that in uh, our first session uh, as well when we talk about property and ownership of property and, and how we can allocate ownership rights differently than how it's been done in the past using tools of technology. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm very um, enthusiastic that we could have Microsoft collaborate with us and have people in the conference who really come from that technology domain and talk about uh, some of those uh, issues. Um, let me just, because we are going to our first session and we are going to uh, start with our first session that is on, uh, on, on housing. Um, we are going to, um, one of the, we can just mention that one of the uh, participants of that first uh, session, uh, John Mercurio, he, he fell ill just the day before, uh, so he could not join us. Uh, and as a result of that, that session is, is shorter. We're going to start a few minutes earlier as well, but what that means is we'll give you that time as a dividend uh, for, your, for, your, for your lunch break. Uh, so you'll have a longer uh, lunch break. Uh, um, let me just open up the first uh, session on, uh, on housing. This is an area which is uh, very close to uh, my heart as well. Uh, a lot of my own work has been in this area 
uh, again, starting with the events of the of the Great Recession. But let me also use this. Let me also use this as an opportunity to illustrate what I was referring to earlier, that we need to think of new mechanisms to deal with our collective uh, kind of problem. So think of the 2008 event, which was obviously housing was central to the 2008 crisis. Um, as a collective choice, we didn't say it like that, but as a collective choice, we all said the following. There's a millions of people borrowed a lot, prices fell, these people need to pay back every dime that they borrowed. If you cannot, your house is mine or the lender's, right? Now, that decision, it meant that 4 million people had to sell their home, essentially, to the lender in fire sales. Collectively, that's a terrible choice. You can argue that individually that's the, you know, that's the moral choice, and that's fine. I'm not going to make a moral argument here. But collectively, you can see why this is a terrible choice, because no economy, even the, as strong as the United States, can absorb 4 million homes uh, you know, within the span of a year uh, without having additional repercussions on prices and so on, uh, not to speak of the 4 million families that have just lost their homes. And so it's a, it's a terrible collective uh, uh, choice, but it was a choice that was embedded in the legal and the financial contract language that we chose uh, before 2008. And so that's just to highlight you know, one episode and, 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 and how the choices, the way we regulate the markets, the way we write financial contracts, that has very real implications, both for the collective strength of the economy and, and as I said, for, for tens of millions of lives. So these are very important questions. I hope we, uh, we, we have a fruitful discussion on that. Uh, so let me begin by, as I said, introducing our housing uh, session, and I will be moderating the first uh, session as well. Uh, we are very pleased to have uh, with us, and I would request them to sit on this table in the front. Um, um, our uh, uh, first participant is Robin Hansen, who is the Associate Professor of Economics at George Mason University. Um, second speaker is Matthew Pruitt, who is the Deputy Director of Radical Exchange. And third speaker will be Anthony Zhang, who uh, is almost a former PhD candidate at Stanford uh, at GSB. Um, and um, I, I, if I were to take a guess, I think he'll be a professor at the University of Chicago soon. So uh, thank you all for joining us.